Well, it's, it's a memoir, which means things I remember, things I heard, things I have witnessed. But you know, a memoir has also some elements of a novel because the, the human memory is not so reliable. It's not that I told lies on purpose in this book. I, I okay. told things I remember, things my, my parents told me, my, my grandmother told me, my uncles told me, and also things I, I have witnessed myself. But I'm, I'm taking this into consideration that, that my memory can be uh, uh, a little elusive from time to time, like anybody else's memory. And then there is also some artistic freedom I allowed myself here and there. But this is a memoir describing a certain episode of the life of my grandmother, uh, who was, uh, I would say, obsessive, compulsive uh, concerning the issue of cleaning. She was cleaning the house all the time. And she made everybody else in the family suffer because of that. But we still remember her with, uh, not with anger, but with the humor and curiosity because she was a real character, a real, what you would say, type. And, uh, and this is the story of, uh, of part of her life, the, the, the issue of the, the cleaning. It's, it's, it's quite a funny story. Uh, because we learned to treat her her uh, problem with humor, but there are, there are also some sad parts in the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you wouldn't call it a novel, I understand. It's it's, it's something in between. It's it's uh, here. I saw they uh, defined it as a, a roman. Uh, in Israel, I did not define it at all. I just said this is a book. It's a book, you know. And and uh, but, but it's it's something. If if I have to to use only one one term, I will say memoir. Okay. And what made you write it? I think about it for many years, and I used the character of my grandmother and other members of the family in in other novels long ago because because I think this is the origin. This is. Uh, this is where I take my, my topics and my imagination and, and uh, most of my stories are made up, they are completely fictitious. But, but the atmosphere in, in my family in the village is the source of all my books and I also, always thought about writing something on more biographical uh, uh, level. And then a few years ago I went to the United States to give a lecture tour in in universities and um, the idea was to, to talk about my, my novels but slowly I found myself talking about the origins the source of my novels about my family and and I told this story about my my grandmother and her vacuum cleaner and I saw that the audience was was very pleased from, by this story and I learned from my family how to tell a story too. So I decided that this will be the, the topic one day and, and I wrote it, yes. But it took you many years to write it. It took me to, to get to it. To, to, ah, to get to it, it took me a few years and to write it took me about uh, two years, something like this. I'm, I'm a slow writer. It's not a big book, but I, I write slowly and, and I polish uh, very thoroughly. I, I write my books the same way my grandmother used to clean the house. Every little detail and, and I think I inherited a few things from her. So perfectionism is, is one of them, which, which, which can be bothering in my case too. And, 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 but my grandmother asked other members of the family to clean all the time too. I don't ask anybody to write my books for me. And, and, and also I think we are both uh, individualists. We are people who live in our own world and we don't want to interact professionally with, with other people. So she suffered uh, being an individualist in a village which was very collective in an ideological way. Uh, and I don't suffer because I found myself uh, 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 an occupation which is very good for individualists and this is the uh, writing. How would you describe this atmosphere you call it? That's in 
all your novels and of, brings of, you of the village the, the topics now in your in in my family in your work, work yeah well first i would say that my family was was a family of of, te- of stories i mean they were farmers we, there are two parts of the family the part of of my father the side of my father are the city people intellectuals academics teachers scholars writers uh, we have several writers in 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 or editors or critics uh, in in the family and scholars the side of my mother are the farmers they they're all in this village and some other villages some of them grow cattle some of them are doing uh, b- building uh, working with iron uh, metals uh, there are people with good hands and they are the people who tell stories they don't write stories they don't research stories they they will not give you a comparison between this novel to another but but they tell beautiful stories and, and they and know how it, to tell them and i'm a mixture of both sides i think okay and if i understand you well these <coughs> farmers mm-hmm. these people from the rural areas are the ideologists yes yes this was i mean today it is not uh, it is not like that anymore but when 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 my grandparents came from russia a hundred years ago they came as what we call pioneers they were all socialists uh, some of them communists that was the uh, first uh, settlers wave uh, uh, probably yes not not the first we call it the second aliyah the second uh, uh, immigration uh, um, they were highly affected by the socialist and communist movements in east europe and they were zionists so it was a mixture of both ideologies they wanted to build in in palestine a, a, a state for the jewish people that will be uh, agricultural socialist this was their idea and they were really fanatic about, about that and my grandmother who was not a part of this ideology but she came from russia to the land of israel because her brothers were already pioneers here and she wanted to be together with the family and maybe if they were in america or in canada she will go there she she did not necessarily thought about the land of israel but she came here and and immediately we saw two things one is that she was highly criticized by the society of the village she was different what in, uh, in what respect was she different uh, she, she 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 was not she was not part of this ideology what was the interest of my grandmother was her family her house her farm her cows she was very strong willed very strong woman she she was very small physically but very strong in 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 her soul and and uh, look my father her husband was much stronger ideologically but he almost broke from the difficulties of of these days and if it was depend on him he would leave the village and go to to the city or or maybe somewhere else because but these were these were diffi- harsh times. Hard, hard times yes but she stuck her nails in the ground and she n- never lived and she fought and she struggled with all her force and she enslaved her children and her husband who were all angry at her but she kept the farm in our hands and this is something that today uh, all the relatives who are still there are very grateful about but but the village people looked at her suspiciously critically she was a controversial uh, uh, woman uh, she was different and and um, i think writing uh, this book uh, and and uh, checking the, the the reactions today gave me a, go- a good lesson because i showed these people the other side of my grandmother and and i can feel that the society of the village today is much more compassionate forgiving and today she became a literary hero in israel it's unbelievable people coming in buses to the village to see her house people go to the her grave in the cemetery and put flowers so she has a right. statue yes but only after she died but uh, yeah and the other side of your grandmother is that the side of strength or um, I, I, I i would say this is uh, not, is it not the opposite the side of 
No, I would say that the other side of her is the stories she was telling, uh, the way she kept uh, uh, the family, protected uh, the family. For me, as a grandchild, she was, I was her oldest grandchild. And uh, we had special relationships. I think I'm the only family member who never had a fight with, with this woman. Uh, all the rest had uh, f fights and reconciliations. And, and I loved her stories. She was telling me stories about her childhood in the Ukraine. And for me, you know, in the hot weather of Israel, these stories about the snow in the winter and the wolves and the freezing river and the ducks and the, and the potatoes in the cellar and the muziks and the pogroms that they suffered. And, and it was like a, a, a legend, you know, it was like a mythology and, and I enjoyed these stories and, and, and in a way I would say she affected me. Uh, not less than my father, who taught me my my Hebrew, my knowledge of the Bible, my 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 literary knowledge and affiliations. But I think she, in her way of telling the story, is 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 uh, also very influential. And what was the meaning of telling each other these stories within this I think this, this was family. a part of. Uh, the, 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 the aim was uh, double. First thing was that they had no other way of entertaining, you know, that this was a poor village, uh, difficult uh, conditions. For example, they did not have electricity in the first 15 years of, of, of the village, for example. Uh, they had to use lanterns to cook on fire, you know, uh, things like this. Um, so sitting around the table in the evening and talking and telling stories, this was entertainment. Uh, the other thing was that, that I think uh, through this humor, special humor, my uncles and my family and my, my grandparents had, this was the way to cope with, with, with these difficulties. And, and they it's are very funny people. Surviving. Yes, they are very funny people. They brought this East European humor, which is the humor in which the poor man or the oppressed man makes fun of himself, you know, and this is how he gathers uh, strength. And uh, for example, uh, my, my grandfather would tell how poor they were in Russia. And he said, uh, when we all the family drank tea, we had to share one cube of sugar for the whole family. And I said, well, did you break it to little pieces? He said, no, we hanged it from a th in a thread from the ceiling and we looked at it while drinking the tea. So this is the kind of humor that, that, that shows uh, the way to cope with this, uh, with this misery. And, and till today, the, the, the sons and daughter of my grandmother, who are still alive, are very, very funny people. They are older people, of course. They were seven to, to begin with, and, and, and uh, they are funny people. I enjoy talking to them very much. And they're still telling each other yes. stories. each other and myself. And sometimes they see one of their stories being used in one of my novels and it makes them very happy. Or and then immediately they make all kinds of corrections. And because whenever somebody in the family says, uh, that so, uh, then somebody else will say, no, it wasn't like this and gives his own version. So uh, when I started to write this book, I, I was interviewing them and asking questions and, and, and look for more stories of the family. And then suddenly I realized that they tell me stories I made up and put in my books as family stories. And I told them, this is not from the family, this is from my books. They said, no, no, you heard it from us when you were a little boy and you used it later. <laughs> so I let them claim uh, uh, the, the right for, for these stories. Uh, has the meaning of telling each other's stories changed? In, 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 in modern times, I, mean. I, I think the, among the younger generation, they have other means of entertainment. They all have the, the, the television and computers but and they, internet. But they still tell each other they stories. They still tell stories, but a, a little less than the previous generations. But the older people are still telling stories to the younger ones and to themselves and to me. 
and it is also look it is also not not a matter of my family it's it's a tradition of the jewish people this is what we do for the last 3000 years we tell stories about ourselves to each other to other people we tell the same way i'm telling you stories about my grandparents the jewish people are telling stories about the great 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 parents abraham isaac and jacob and we don't tell just stories the way the new testament is telling about jesus for example only miracles and 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 uh, and moralistic lessons and spiritual lessons when we tell the biblical stories about our family all the ancient family we tell about the love life we tell about the even sex life from time to time we tell real life of people but has the meaning changed the meaning of, of storytelling changed it, it's, in modern it, times it's it changed because there are other channels of 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 uh, artistic channel but i think that that uh, maybe in the times of the neanderthals they were the three most basic artistic channels one was to draw on the on the cave walls and one was to sit uh, around fire in the cave and tell stories to each other the, now these were mythological stories how come there is a uh, rain falling from the sky or how come uh, uh, there is lightning or the sun goes like this and there were also practical stories of uh, where shall we go tomorrow to hunt, you know, uh, something like this. And, and there was music, people were hitting something, uh, drumming, uh, uh, um, and, and everything we know today is, is uh, film and television and internet, you know, uh, wasn't there, but, but these are the three basic most basic arts and and i'm happy to be to continue one of them you explained the atmosphere in your mm -hmm. books and in your history to yes. me um how would you uh, describe your um, main subjects well i, I would say the, the main subject would be the family which is the most classical theme of, of of literature in in all cultures we all tell about uh, the love between a man and a woman uh, the, the the relationships between parents and children we tell about love betrayal jealousy revenge uh, themes family themes like this in in my book um, a pigeon and the boy the theme was a, li a little different um, in my book, uh, The Four Meals, it was more about the, the way a man can wait for many years for his love to come, to come true. But still, it is the relationship between people. Uh, uh, I don't write political novel and I don't like the mixture of politics and, and literature. I'm not one of the writers who it uh, talks too much about uh, uh, politics. I have a column in the press in Israel where I express myself about many subjects. So I can write about the wild flowers in my garden and a week later about the coalition, you know, about political problems. But and, and you leave the subjects out of your books away deliberately? From the books. Uh, look, it, it's, it's uh, of course, when, when, when one of my characters is, is killed in the war or, or go to the army, then of course it has to do with the Israeli politics. But it is not the topic of, of my books and I don't want to educate people or show them the right political way or correct their moral, morale or anything like that. I'm not an educational uh, author. But you are... Uh, I'm telling stories. A storyteller. I'm telling stories and uh, writing stories in my case and, and, uh, and I try to be as, as good and professional as possible. I mean concerning my my style, my polishing my, my sentences and the, the, the way I built the story because the story when you tell it in a linear way it can be quite boring. You have to, to maneuver the story and, and this, is, this is my art. So there is also no Holocaust and the, no, the, the, no, the, no, 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 no,
I have uh, one of the characters is, is a survivor of the Holocaust, but but I don't use the Holocaust as a topic in in my books. I describe people who live in Israel of my time or a generation before to the generations before my time, and this is where my my topics are coming from. And and does that mean that you as a as a writer um, left the Holocaust behind, or does the, or doesn't fit in? It, it is not a part, it's not the major part of my storytelling. The major part of my storytelling has to do with my own experiences, with my, uh, with, with, with my memories, the memories of my family. Now I am, my parents were born in Israel, I was born in Israel. We had relatives whom I never knew who perished in, in the Holocaust, but uh, it, it's not part of my family life. It's, uh, I'm not a survivor myself, I'm too young for that. And I'm, I'm, uh, I was born in 48 in, in Israel, and I am not what we call the second generation. Uh, it's it's uh, different, and, and I don't feel I have to apologize for that. I, I write about my reality and about things I know about. Is there, um, could you say that there is an undertow in your work of uh, longing, strong longing to the past? Longing no, for the not past? Not to the past, but longing generally. I'm, I do not long to the past because if I had to live at the times of my grandmother, I think I would suffer even more than she did because I will also be criticized the same way because I'm also not such a, a perfect ideological farmer and I'm not such and I was am not as strong and as she was so so I guess uh, I will be also a, a victim of, of criticism and uh, checking and watching like she was uh, so there is no longing in me to the older to the older days uh, but there is an element of longing because I, I believe in the element of longing and not fulfilling in the lives of everybody I think that you should always leave something to be longed for, something to last for. Um, I think if you fulfill all your wishes, there is some kind of emptiness and even disappointment. You must long for something. It, again, it has to do with our tradition of waiting for the Messiah and don't let him come. You know, this is the Jewish way of dealing with the messianic belief. We, we long for the Messiah, we wait for the Messiah. But if he shows signs of coming, we deny him, you know, because we want the longing, we want the, the yearning. It's, it's, it's a good trick. I recommend it to everybody. Is, is that a collective? Is that collective in, in, in Jewish uh, psychology? You mean? When, when, when I say it aloud in Israel, people are angry at me. Beca because they Why? say, no, we want the Messiah to come. And I said, no, you don't want the Messiah to come. You want to wait for the Messiah. This is what you like, not the Messiah himself. You like to, so there are, there are arguments, but I think there are many expressions in Jewish uh, 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 thinking uh, which shows this, this, uh, this tendency to, to long, like every time for 2000 years, Every Passover, everybody says, next year in Jerusalem. Because this is our wish to come back from our exile to our homeland, which we keep repeating for 2,000 years. But now we are in Jerusalem, and we are back in our land, and we have Jerusalem, and we still say, next year in Jerusalem. Because now we mean the other Jerusalem, not, not the material Jerusalem, but maybe next year in the... Upper Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem, the messianic Jerusalem. Do you feel connected to um, other writers? I feel connected to many writers. I mean, some of them I mention in this book. These are the three. I, I say that there are four Russian storytellers who affected me. This is uh, Nabokov, Bulgakov, Gogol, and my grandmother. These are three, four Russian storytellers, and I said it to Russian readers in Moscow a few years ago, and they were very happy about this group, you know, of my grandmother included. And and uh, I I think uh, Thomas Hardy is very dear to me, and Henry Fielding. Uh, and uh, Melville with his uh, Moby Dick and Mark Twain with his uh, humor and Agnon, our great 
grand writer uh, uh, who is our Nobel Prize winner of 60 or 50 years ago, 50 I would say years ago. Uh, um, and I have a special affiliation with a children, Israeli children writer called Nahum Gutman, also from a previous generation. There are many writers I'm, I have sort of a family rela relationships with. I always felt you, you might in the mind be uh, a family member of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, for instance. No, I would say I am more, I, I take it as a compliment because I, I admire his work, but I read him when all the writers I mentioned to you, I read when I, between the age of 12 to 18, something like this. Uh, Marcus I read only when I was 20 something and I feel that the, the older you get that you can enjoy the books the same but they do not tattoo themselves into your flesh the way the books of my juvenile uh, time, time did. So I enjoyed reading him very much but it didn't have the same effect as, as Dead Souls of Gogol for example which I read when I was 16 or or 15, or, or, or uh, uh, um, the, the Chosen of Thomas Mann, who is also another writer I appreciate a lot, and Joseph is, and his brothers by, by Thomas Mann, and because the Bible is very important for me, and, 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 and this um, way Thomas Mann dealt with the Bible was intriguing and, and very influential. Uh, on me, so so I, I think the, the writers I read in an earlier stage are the ones who are more influential. What makes the Bible so, so important to you? Well, first because of uh, autobiographical fact that my father, who was also a writer, was a Bible scholar and he, he was a secular person like I am, but he was highly interested in the Bible because of literary, historical and, and, and national reasons. And he was a great, great scholar of the Bible. He knew the Bible almost by heart. I'm talking about the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. And he used to teach us and his pupils in school the Bible on location. When we read about David and Goliath, we went to the same spot where it happened. And he was reading the chapter there and everything came to life. And he was throwing stones and did whatever needed. You know, it was... And, and I think if, if teachers will do the same today, it will be a great experience for, for the children. And, and this is one reason, because I was influenced by my father. And the other reason is that, that um, is the Hebrew language, which changed, did change like any other language, but, but still today we can read a chapter from the Bible. Okay. which was written 3,000 years ago, and understand most of it, and vice versa. If King David or Jesus Christ will come now into this room, they can read a chapter from my book in Hebrew and understand half of it, maybe. This is unbelievable. It, it doesn't exist in any other language. So it gives me this, um, this feeling of a very long line of, of writers, a very long dynasty of literature. A tradition. A tradition. I mean, I'm not so sure if, a, if an Italian writer today can feel so close to Ovidius or Virgilius because uh, they wrote in different languages. But I write the same language, almost. So th this, is also, this also has to do with it. And I also admire some of the biblical literary techniques, for example, the Bible doesn't deal much with the psychology of, of, of the characters. The Bible tells you the, the actions, the deeds, the words, we say, but, but they don't dig deep into the soul, into the inner depth of psychology, which is so popular today among many writers who load you with tons of psychology that for me I find it very boring sometimes. I prefer to make the psychological analysis myself. I want the writer to describe to me the what action. happened. The but, but I want to make the explanations. I want to understand why why did a character did that or or, or not did uh, uh, the other thing. And, and the Bible is such, I like the way the Bible tells a story in a very minimal 
diamond-like uh, 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 way. Is the Bible a good book? Some of it is, is uh, very good. Some of it were, parts of it were written, I think, by poor writers. Which, par uh, which, which part is very good? The parts which are very good are, for example, the book of Ruth. Uh, the story of Ruth, the Moabite woman who came to Bethlehem is the story stories of David. The, the best story in the Bible is everything that has to do with Jacob, Rachel, Joseph and his brothers. I think this is the, the best novel in, inside the Bible. Where is great sense of longing to... Uh, longing, but, but also... For, the, the, longing it's a for, good story. For, for love and, and longing for a woman. It's a good story. It's, a, it's, it's the longing of, of, of uh, Jacob to Rachel. It's the longing of Joseph to his family. It's revenge, it's love, it's sex, it's, it's, and it's written in a beautiful, beautiful way. It's, it's, an, American, I, I would, I it's would, an American movie. It is, it is far better than an American movie because a lot of classical books, you can, if you want to be cynical, you can say, well, they all tell about a boy meets girl, you know, and, and let's see what, what happens now. But I think you can also say that the Odyssey is an American movie, a man coming back home after 20 years. And this became some sort of a motif in all our literature ever since. And I think these parts of the Bible are, are, can be easily compared with the Odyssey uh, of, of uh, Homerus and in certain respects even better because they are written in a, in a better style, in a different style. And so, so these are, uh, and on the other hand, there are stories in the Bible which are very educational, uh, um, not very sophisticated, uh, on, on the lower level of religious uh, propaganda. And studying these good parts of the Bible taught you lessons, taught you, helped you to... It, it helps me to write. To write yes, books. Yes, yes, really. It's, uh, it helps me to write. It's, uh, I borrow themes from the Bible uh, and, and sometimes I think, how would the biblical author will describe the same scene I'm describing now? And we write differently, but still, I... I, I I, I'm influenced by, by this way of writing.